This is a dirty, dark, beaten up riverbed in the remote corner of Wales. And this is the hard living, hard charging, but sparkling all new Japanese motor, the EP8 from Shimano. It really likes places like this, more purr than whir, quieter, smoother, and considerably more powerful than its stablemate, the E7 and E8000s, a motor that turns a possible into a probable. As you might imagine, we were very, very excited when we got the invitation from Merida and Shimano to beat the living daylights out of this bike. And we have taken the new Merida E160 through hell and high water through some incredibly testing terrain. You might have seen us rock climbing in sunnier, grippier places on the current Merida E160. And so the fine tune of a fine tune continues with this latest bike. The same range of sizing, the low standover for scaling those peaks, the low slack geometry for charging those descents, the integration, the mixed wheel size, and very importantly, the silent ride character, now all harnessing the new EP8 in a united fashion. The new Shimano EP8 is at the very heart of the new Merida E160, which you might recognize because, uh, well, it's actually exactly the same in terms of shape and structure to the current model. And a reminder to everybody that a motor alone does not make a bike. But hey folks, let's not kid ourselves. This is an eagerly anticipated drive unit. And guess what? It actually comes on the whole range of Merida E140s and E160s from the low spec bikes up to the high spec bikes. But what is this motor about and what does it mean for you, the rider? The EP8 then, we are talking all new hardware and software. So the motor, the switch and computer, the hard stuff, the skull, the bits and the pieces, and its personality and the brain, the bits inside, the soft stuff, the character of this new setup from Shimano. And we'll also be looking at what part you, yes, you guys have to play in all this. Right, let's have a quick overview of the motor then. Now, it is much, much more powerful than the old motor. It's actually 20% more powerful. It goes from 70 Nm up to a massive 85 Nm. It's also lighter. It's now down to 2.6 kilograms, which is one of the lightest on the market. It's sleeker, which means a little bit more ground clearance. And also, it keeps itself cooler, which is a great thing for electrics. The EP8 also has smoother pedaling, and that's because there's less friction in the system, which is great for when you're traveling above speeds of 25 kilometers an hour. It also means that the batteries are more efficient. In fact, there is 36% less drag on this new motor. So when you add in factors such as improved clutch mechanisms, again, which is great above 25 kilometers an hour, and it means that overall, there's far better handling on this new system. And the battery, can you believe it? That is also up 20% as well, folks. Now it's 630 watt hours, but you've still got the option of the 504 watt hour battery too. And also, it's actually more efficient thanks to there being less friction in the pedaling of the motor. And don't forget, you've got the E2 Ride and the E2 Project app, which is updated over the previous versions. And that lets you tune the personality of this bike in so many more ways than over the previous version. My name's Steve Jones, like, and I like having a stick for pointing out the detail on the bikes. Anyhow, did you know we're actually on the San Helen, which is an ancient road which linked North Wales to South Wales in Roman times. Anyhow, some lovely details on this bike. We've got Thermogate, just located here, to cool the battery. We've got lights, front and rear. I mean, 
what mountain bike has got lights on their bike? It shows how much more advanced mountain bikes are. A lifetime warranty on the frame. A beautiful little tool in here to help you take out the battery. Uh, some very, very good uh, internal cable routing. And check this out, Jackie boy, check this out. A tool under the seat. Oh yeah. Right, I really want to talk about the software because it really is at the soul of this new bike. So, the new EP8 software, what does it actually mean? Well, two things to start with. First of all is adjusted modes and also customization. Now, the modes, Eco Trail and Boost on this bike have been altered compared to the old E8000 and 7000 system, which means there's different levels of support in each of those modes. But big news is customization. Now you can tinker and tune with this motor to your heart's content. Uh, 10 different settings, you can add presets to the bike, which is, which is you know, it just puts e-bikes on another level compared to mountain bikes. Um, and also you can set the bike between 20 and 85 newton meters of torque. I mean, that, honestly, that is next level stuff. So what about the individual modes? Well, boost goes from 70 Nm up to 85 Nm torque with low rider input torque too. And by the way, this is probably one of the first things you notice is how much the motor is eager to get going. Trail mode also tops out at 85 Nm, but trail mode is much more sensitive to rider input. So it'll either support you more when you're going in for a big attack of a slope or it will back off when the going is easier for improved battery consumption. And finally, Eco tops out at 30 Nm. Now this is ideal for transfer sections or simply to get involved in some hefty workouts or get some crazy long range out of your battery. pretty hot in here, in this deep dark woods in South Wales. Um, right, what does the new software or the EP8 motor system, whatever you prefer to call it, allow you to do? What does it mean for you, the rider, when you're out on the trail as well? Probably the most, no most noticeable thing about the motor is the acceleration. There's definitely a uh, quicker snap with this, with this motor and it really does love to spin as well. You're looking at between 90 and 100 RPM, particularly when you're on, when you're on flatter sort of fire tracks or smoother trails. However, when you do get involved in the more technical riding, that's the only place where you really get to experience the wide range nature of this motor and also the possibilities for tuning because it can be a little bit of a handful when you're in boost mode and at the maximum torque. So something is, I think it's great that you can explore those different settings. Now, increased torque does mean you'll be able to tackle some bigger challenges, but you really need to tune into the tempo of this motor and work with it. And remember, such things <laughs> as anticipation and traction control are still the responsibility of you, the rider. Well, I finally made it up that climb, but I think what I did highlight is that how important the motor is, but also your understanding of how the motor works, plus your traction control. And that nagging bee, which might've been on your mind for many years, might now be possible with the new EP8 motor. But as we've seen many times, it's not just all those things, it's such things as good geometry on the bike. Geometry, which allows you to climb and descend. Out on the trail, customization means you can set torque for different rider profiles and also the type of the ride. This means you can tune into rides with more mates and different motors or set the bike up for someone who might not yet understand the subtleties of e-biking. Or for example, you can tune the bike for extreme or casual, low distance or long distance. Longer range, this is something you'll be able to achieve now with the new Merida E160 with the EP8 motor. This is due to the larger capacity battery and also you'll be able to tackle longer climbs due to the motor dealing with heat better. And finally, your ride history. The maps and all the history and outputs from the ride to help you plan the next one. Yeah, 
the stick is back. Now we've rattled on about the fact that it's 20% more powerful, 10% lighter, and with 36% less drag in the system. What else of the fine details of this Merida E160 with the EPA? Well, crank size for one, now comes the 160 crank length, along with the others, 165, 170, and 175. Three chain ring sizes up front, 34, 36, and 38. Uh, it's compatible with 12 speed plus, I guess, all the other speeds. It's got a really cute, no, it's not cute, it's a neat chainring guide, plus the same engine mount pattern as the E7000 and E8000. But that is another subject which will continue at a later date. And let's not forget, folks, about the computer and the switch on this new system. It is super low profile, which is something missing on a lot of e-mountain bikes. You can now switch between custom settings and can also connect to third-party devices, a bit like my watch. You can also read the system in direct sunlight. And also the switch, which is similar to the old one, but which is more concave and has a wider area to it. Super, super neat. Marie to say, while these improvements and upgrades have a positive effect on the already impressive riding characteristics of the E160 lineup, the majority of our e-bike range will benefit from the range and power output increases of the EP8. All EMTB that come equipped with a 630 watt hour battery will feature the new EP8 motor. EP8 630 watt hour battery equipped e full suspension bikes start from around 4,200 euros, that's 3,800 pounds, and EP8 630 watt hour equipped hardtails from around 3,500 euros or 3,200 pounds. You know what? The more and more I think about it, it is a complete system. I think Shimano and the guys at Merida are really into e-mountain bikes. Oh yeah, the mud guards. Don't forget the mud guards. So, the new EP8 motor in the Merida E160 and the E140, don't forget. Uh, I'm genuinely very, very excited about this new motor. I think it's very big news for e-mountain biking. But what do you guys think? Do you think that Shimano really needed to go with 85 newton meters? After all, the E7000 is still such a great motor. Nevertheless, I'm looking forward to exploring the customization and the new possibilities of hill climbing with the increased torque. So, get involved in the comments uh, and we'll see you on the hills next time.